I was seven when I started playing the piano. And then immediately after started playing, um, also started improvising. And that's really through improvisation was my way into composition. One of the first pieces I wrote was a song inspired by Marco Polo. One of my friends uh, went to Cuba to live there and she came back uh, with perfect Spanish. And uh, I asked her to write the lyrics for this Marco Polo saga and then I wrote the song in Spanish. So one of my first pieces was actually a song in Spanish. I moved to the UK with my parents when I was 11. So um, yes, in 91. Um, and that's where I started studying composition um, officially. Max and I have known each other for coming up to 20 years probably. We studied together at the Guildhall School and uh, actually there was one of the first concerts which I had at the Guildhall. Max was at that concert. It was a string quartet and it was in the lecture recital room. I remember it so vividly. And then at the end of the concert, he came down the stairs and he said that he really liked the quartet and could I write a piece for him? The result was a solo viola suite called Pirin. And uh, he's played that so much um, ever since. And that piece grew into a very long-term collaboration with another two suites, a suite in old style and a suite in jazz style, a viola concerto, as well as many chamber pieces, and one of the pieces which is being part of this project as well, the fantasy homage to Schubert. My relationship with Schubert's music really began as a child, listening to um, Winterreise and um, so the symphonies which we had in the family collection. Um, there was a sincerity and a real purity to the music which I think even to a child appeals and um, can speak so directly, which is something which um, um, of course attracted me to the music. And um, they're songs, they're very human songs, they're very honest songs. Um, so I think any age um, it, can, it can speak to you. Um, and so when Max approached me to write this piece to be part of his um, great vision for a, um, a project in honor of Schubert's work, um, I, it, was, it was a great challenge because how do you write something for a composer who you've admired for so many years, but also try to have your own personal voice in it as well? So there were many different avenues which I started maybe trying, starting with songs and taking just the, the melody and then adding other layers behind the, the melody to sort of um, build on what is already there. Um, but I didn't want it to be a, a pastiche of Schubert. It's already such pure music. Um, the piece which really opened that door of possibilities for me was the fantasy in C major for violin and piano which is a really challenging and difficult work, but it was its opening which has forever um, captured my imagination. It, this kind of really delicate shimmer, tremor at the very beginning, and then uh, an absolute heavenly melody which uh, arises from that. The, um, this to me became the heart of this homage which I wanted to write for Schubert, and um, I, the, the way for this piece was how to reach that place. For me in the fantasy, already the beginning is some kind of an arrival. It doesn't feel like the opening of a piece. It feels like you have been searching and all of a sudden there it is in its absolute purest form. Um, a, a, a perfectly um, created melody. And um, so there were many um, different options which I tried to have how to reach that melody. And so I, I experimented with different chords and didn't really want to have a definite tonality. But I wanted to have some kind of uncertainty. This is where the idea of space, cosmos, and some kind of infinity uh, came from. Um, and I created that with these shifting clouds of sound in the strings, um, which are then underpinned by the 
um, by the main chords of the opening of the fantasy of Schubert's chords. Um, and so there is this constant, there is a direction given by that bass and, and the chords and the harmony of, of Schubert, and then that's, that's a, like a really extended, really stretched out um, direction and, and um, yes, it's, it's, yes, it is a direction. And then these kind of hovering, unknown galaxies which you're floating through, arriving at the melody that Schubert wrote as our first glimpse of, say, planet Earth, some perfect small utopia, um, or we hope that it can be, um, and that arises from this magma of sounds and shifting sonorities. Every time I visit Riga is always some kind of a, an emotional experience. Uh, my very first visit was connected to a project with a choir, the Kamer Youth Choir, a uh, Sun Songs project. And the magical thing was that it was part of the big song festival. So I got to experience that on a huge scale, marching through the boulevards with flowers. Um, and also here, it was a very moving experience to have my cello concerto performed in Riga with Riga Sinfonietta and with the dedicatee of the work, Christine Blaumanne. So it was a really special performance. That was a few years after the choral project. And I've been coming back since um, quite a few times. I've made wonderful friends here. So it's really special that this project actually has found a home in Riga, which is, um, it has a really special, um, feeling really real warmth and in such a beautiful space as well with a fantastic acoustic which i think really lends itself to the space that the music requires my relationship with the with the works of of schubert started as a as a student um, which part of my studies was to um, continue uh, the accompaniment of Schubert songs. So you were given the melody and you were just given part of the accompaniment and then you have to continue making that. So um, for a few years before I, I, uh, Max approached me to write the uh, Arpeggione arrangement, um, I'd been invested in the world and um, was aware of, of the intricacies and the simplicity, the, the pure simplicity of the voice leading behind each line, even on, a, um, on, on, on the piano. So when Max asked me to make an arrangement of the arpeggione, it, it made perfect sense because it, it, somehow the piano works fall so naturally into different voices. Um, and I think it just made perfect sense. And I think it's, uh, it's an arrangement which I've tried to be as honest as um, honest and as truthful to the score as possible and uh, just create a, a very transparent um, arrangement as with the Lairman, which is again such a simple, beautiful human song which um, I think very transparently can be translated to the strings. I think the concept of this whole project is, um, is on a really big scale to bring music from the past which can be reinterpreted in our time is a really wonderful and really important um, part of the way that we treat our past culture and the way that we are in this day um, celebrating the past but also showing that we can develop in the future. So to be part of some, a composer who I've loved for so many years, one of the reasons why I uh, am also a composer myself, and then to be part of a collective of composers who I admire so much, Desyatnikov, a composer who I've, whose music, um, he has such a fantastic ear for, for harmony and for melodies. Uh, it's, it's such an attractive and such an original world. And then uh, Sergei Akhunov, who of course comes from a very different background and brings um, even the, the rock world into classical music. I think it's very, it, it, it's a wonderful collective to be part of, celebrating past, but also showing future tendencies. So I, um, I fully commend Max for choosing this um, collective of people and for the concept of the whole project, which I think is, um, I think it's a, a wonderful idea and I'm very privileged to be part of it.